Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Rabbi zidni ilma Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlul uqtatan min lisani yafqa qawli Today we will be solving October November 2023 0580 paper 2 variant 1 Before I start my paper I wanted to inform you all that all revenue generated will be donated to Palestine inshallah so please do make sure to like subscribe and share my channel So the first question is says that the diagram shows an isosceles triangle find the value of x Look Isosceles triangle is a triangle which has two equal sides. For example, it's shown over here that these two sides are equal. If two sides are equal, then two angles are also equal. So if this angle is 41, this angle is also going to be 41. So in order to find x, we will do 41 plus 41 plus x is equals to 180. 41 plus 41 is 82. 82 plus x is equals to 180. In order to find x, we will do x is equals to 180 minus 82. x is equals to 98 degrees. So our value of x is 98. Now we'll move on to the next question. It says we have a stem and leaf diagram. Let me zoom it out a bit. The stem and leaf diagram shows the time in minutes it takes 15 people to complete a race. The question now says find the mode. Now look how do we read the stem and leaf diagram? We use the key. So for example if we have 1 like this then we have a line and if we have 6 it means 16. Alright. So for example if we have 1 like this and after the line we have 7 it means 17 minutes. Now mode is the number which occurs the most. So if you look at it over here 7 is coming 3 times. So, and over here we have 2. So, the mode is going to be 27 minutes. The next question says find the range. Alright. In order to find the range, you will do what? Range is the biggest number minus the smallest number. The biggest number is 31. So, we will write 3, 1. We will subtract it from the smallest number which is 16. Alright. 31 minus 15, uh, 16 is 15 minutes so your answer is going to be 15 now the next question says find the median so in order to find the median median is the middle number all right and you have to see how many numbers do we have here we have 15 people all right it means seven people on the left side all right seven people here and in the middle we have one number all right so it means 8 is going to be the median. If you guys do not understand this, another way is to do like this. n plus 1 divided by 2. n is 15, total number of people participating. 15 plus 1 divided by 2. It's 16 divided by 2, which is 8. All right. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, median is 25 minutes. Moving on to our next question says complete the statement when x is equal to dash x plus 3 is equal to 8. So this question means that when you add when you add a number with 3 you get 8. So x is going to be 5 because 5 plus 3 is 8. So x is equal to 5. Now the second question says that 7y is equal to 63. 10y is equal to dash. So look. 7y is equal to 63, y is equal to 63 divided by 7, y is equal to 9. So 10y means 10 multiplied by 9, 10 9s are is 90. Moving on to question number 4, it says the table shows some information about Amir's shopping. So fruit, <laughs> Amir is shopping fruits. So you have oranges, cost per kilo, number of kilograms Amir is by. Alright, so this is very easy. We have to complete the table. So Amir is buying oranges. So each kilo is 2.35 and he bought 3.2 kgs of oranges. So let us see now. 2.35 multiplied by 3.2. So we get 7.52. So the cost of oranges is 7.52 dollars. Now look guys, we do not know the cost per kilogram of bananas. All right, but we know we can write it as x. So 7.52 plus x is equals to total cost, which is 13.54. X is equals to 13.54 
minus 7.52 all right so we will do 13.54 minus 7.52 which means that it's 6.02 so the cost of bananas is 6.02 now look if you want to find the price of per kilogram you will do 6.02 divided by how many kilograms you bought so 6.02 divided by 2.8 it will give you 2.15 so the cost of bananas per kilogram is 2.15 let's move on to our next question it says factorize okay so we have 42 mk minus 35 both 42 and 35 come in the table of 7 all right so i will take 7 as common and the other number that i will take as common is m so this becomes 7 6 is 42 so 6 K minus 7 5 there is 35 so your answer is 7 M bracket 6 K minus 5 part B is an identity in this identity it's like this a square minus B square is equals to a plus B and a minus B all right so this will become H minus 12 and h plus 12 so h minus 12 and h plus 12 moving on to our next question we have for each of 10 people working in an office the scattered uh, scatter diagram shows their salary and the value of their car okay oh, so it means how rich a person is salary and value of car one of these people has a salary of 28,000 find the value of their car so look guys this question is very easy go down here i hope one day i also buy a good car anyways so look this each box represents two thousand dollars all right two four six eight ten now the question is saying one of these people has a salary of twenty eight thousand which means twenty twenty two twenty four twenty six twenty eight you will go up like this all right and we met the x if you look at it the value of each this small box is 200 dollars 200 400 600 800 1000 so 4000 4200 4400 4600 4800 so the value of the car is going to be 4800 dollars now the next question says another person starts to work in the office their salary is 54,000 and the value of their car is 6,100. Plot this information on the scatter diagram. Okay. So look, 54,000 is over here. 50,000, 52, 54. Okay. So let me zoom it in further. We go up like this. And the value of their car is 6,100. Okay. So 54. All right and 6100 it's going to be between 62 and 6000 so it's going to be in the middle all right so this is how you will sketch this so you get one mark now the question says what type of correlation is shown in the scatter diagram now the correlation that is shown over here is positive the reason is because if a person has a high salary the value of his car is also high so both things are increasing so it's a positive correlation now next question is says the exchange rate between singaporean dollar and euros is one singaporean dollars to 0 0.62 find the value of six one sixty one point two euros in singaporean dollars okay right over here singapore right over here euro exchange is one is to 0 0.62 we have euros okay so we will write 161.2 over here and singaporean dollars x we will just cross multiply so this becomes 0.62x is equals to 1 multiplied by 161.2 x is equals to 161.2 divided by 0.62 all right now we will do 1 uh -huh, 161.2 divide by 0.62 so it's 260 he will get 260 singaporean dollars now next question says calculate so you will do it like this 
since it says uh, does not mention anything about calculator you can use a calculator like this so 7 whole 3 upon 11 multiply by 3 whole 3 upon 10 so it's 24 next question find the highest common factor so in this question you will write 140 you will write 126 you will first divide it with 2 so this becomes 70 and this becomes 60 uh, 62 then again that's divided with 2 this will become 35 and this will become 31 my bad guys it's not 62 it's 63 okay it's not 62 it's 63 over here so 70 and 63 they both come in the table of 7 okay so I will do 7 tens are 7 nines are now this cannot be divided any further so you will do 2 multiply by 7 so the answer is going to be 14 so HCF is 14 moving on to our next question says simplify so look if n does not have any power it means n has the power of 1 so n5 multiplied by n1 is n6 next question it says 8x raised to power 6 divided by 2x raised to power 2 if we first uh, 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4 and the powers will be subtracted 6 minus 2 so this becomes 4x 4 all right moving on to 43 y is 20 raised to power 2 upon 5 look instead of writing 2 I can write it like this 243 raised to power 2 upon 5 y 20 multiply by 2 upon 5 this becomes 243 is how much I can write it as 3 raised to power 5 multiply by 2 upon 5 and y 20 is multiply by 2 upon 5 5 5 cancel so this becomes 3 square 5 ones are 5 5 fours are 20 4 twos are is 8 3 square y 8 3 square is 9 so this becomes 9 y raised to the power 8 moving on to our next question say solve this identity so look inequality sorry so first of all you will multiply with this with 4 so this becomes 8x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 43 plus 3x okay shift 3x over there shift 12 over here 8x minus 3x is greater than or equal to 43 plus 12 8x minus 3x is 5x is greater than or equal to 43 plus 12 is 53 55 x is greater than or equal to 55 divided by 5 x is greater than or equal to 11 so you will put your final answer is x is greater than or equal to 11 moving on to our next question it says write 0.42 as a fraction in its simplest form so x is equals to 0 0.42 and this dot on 2 means 2 2 2 okay so I can say 100x is equals to 42.2 and 10x is equals to 4.2 if I subtract these both 100x minus 10x is 90x and 42 uh, 42.2 minus 4.2 is 42.2 minus 4.2 is 38 x is equals to 38 divided by 90 x is equals to 38 divided by 90 is 19 upon 45 so this will be your final answer now in question 13 it says at the end of 2021 there were 27,000 rhinos living in the wild the number of rhinos is expected to decrease exponentially look guys whenever they say exponential remember you will use compound interest formula that's it all right so in this question we will use compound interest formula which is a is equals to p bracket 1 plus r upon n raised to power t t is time 
So it says at the end of 2021, there were 27,000 rhinos living in the world, in the wild. The number of rhinos is expected to decrease exponentially by 3%. Work out the number of rhinos expected to be living in the wild four years later at the end of 2025. Okay, give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. So look, right now how many rhinos are there? 27,000. So P is going to be 27,000. One, we will not use plus because it is expected to decrease. Decrease means negative. So you write negative 3 upon 100, which is part of the formula, raised to power t. Look, right now it's 2021. They are asking for 2025, which is four years later. So you will raise this to power 4. Now, all you have to do is use the calculator. 27,000 multiply by 1 minus 3 upon 100 raised to power 4 so it's 2000 23902.9 and of course a rhino cannot be 0.9 all right we cannot have a 0.9 of a rhino so we will round it off to 23903 rhinos now moving on to the next question we have this it says the Venn diagram shows information about the number of elements in set A, B, and universal. All of this is equals to 52. Find N of A intersection B. Look, N of A intersection B means how many numbers are over here. But for that, we need to first find X. So we will do 15 plus 5X plus X plus 5 plus 12 minus X is equals to 52. Let's add all the numbers 15 plus 5 plus 12. Okay. 15 plus 5 plus 12 is 15 plus 5 is 20. 20 plus 12 is 32. X and X gets cancelled out, so it remains plus 5X is equals to 52. 5X is equals to 52 minus 32. 5X is equals to 20. 42 for 20. X is equals to 20 divided by 5. X is equals to 4. All right, so it means in place of x, you will write 4. 4 plus 5, it's 9. So it means n of a intersection b is 9. So you will just write 9 over here. Now in the Venn diagram, it says shade c intersection d intersection e. Many students find this difficult. I'm going to tell you a trick which I always use. If you guys want to learn sets in Venn diagrams, you can also go to my YouTube playlist. It has complete videos. It will have complete videos actually, inshallah. Right now, there are two videos, I guess. Anyways, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It means the universal set has all the numbers from 1 all the way up till 8. Set C has numbers from 1, 2, 5, 6. Set D has numbers 2, 3, 4, 5. And set E has numbers. 4, 5, 6, 7. Now the question says shade C intersection D intersection E. So look which numbers are common in all? 5, 5, 5. So it means this is going to be your answer. Moving on to the next question. It says by shading the unwanted regions of the grid, draw and label the region R which satisfies these equations. So it says y is greater than equals to 1. Sorry, y is greater than 1. When we say y is greater than 1, it means this line. It means the shaded region lies above this line. So because the question is saying by shading the unwanted region, we will shade this part. This part is unwanted. We do not want this part. Then the question says x is greater than equals to 2. If x is greater than equals to 2, it means this line. Because over here x is 2. So they want this region. So what is going to be the unwanted region? The one on the back. Alright. Uh, I have made a mistake over here. It's not x is greater than equal to 2. It's x is less than equal to 2. Alright, x is 
less than equals to 2 which means we will shade this part greater than equal to 2 because this is unwanted we want this part on the left not the part on the right so we will shade this part since you guys might finding it confusing what I'll do I'll just use I'll use a yeah, highlighter so look this is the side we do not want this is the unwanted region and this is the unwanted region okay unwanted region so far okay now next it's the line it says y is greater than equal to x plus 2 all right so in order to solve for this line just take two values for x take 1 and 2 so when x is 1 y is 1 plus 2 y is 3 so it's 1 comma 3 1 comma 3 is over here and when x is 2 it's y is greater than equal to 2 plus 2 y is greater than equal to 4 it's 2 comma 4 all right so if I make a straight line let's take another point let's take a point of 0 if x is 0 y is only 2 because 0 plus 2 is 2 all right so it means if I sketch the line it means this point all right like this so the question is actually saying what the question is telling us y is greater than equals to x plus 2 also guys one thing which I did not um, do right now when you are making these lines look since y is only greater than 1 you will make a dotted line but over here it says y is less than equals to 2 so you will make a straight line like this all right and over here since it says that y is greater than equals to x plus 2 again you will make a shaded line not a dotted line so you will make a shaded line like this now look let's look into the inequality the inequality says that y is greater than equals to x plus 2 all right so for example if i say that the value of x is 0 all right and the value of y is let's say 0 comma 5 let's say y is 5 so if i plug in over here in place of y i will plug 5 phi is greater than equal to 0 plus 2 it means 5 is greater than equal to 2 which is true 5 is actually greater than 2 it means this portion let me shade it this portion is the acceptable region all right this portion will be what this portion will be acceptable so I will shade all of this oh, sorry my bad I will shade all of this this is going to be the acceptable what or the wanted region this is actually the wanted region and this is going to be the unwanted region all right so you can even write R over here now let's move on to the next question it says let me zoom it in it says P is equals to 2W plus 2H W is equals to 11 H is equals to 9.5 both correct to two significant figures find the lower bound and the upper bound for P so in this question for example let's say W is 11 all right and it's correct to two significant figures so the second figure is 1 all right so it means I will do 1 divided by 2 which is 0 0.5 now for W all right uh, let me write W over here sorry uh, let me write W over here this is upper bound this is lower bound upper bound would be 11 plus 0 0.5 lower bound would be 11 minus 0 0.5 11 plus 0 0.5 is 11.5 11 minus 0 0.5 is 10.5 and for if you look at 9.5 the second significant figure is 0 0.5 which means I will do 0 0.5 divided by 2 which is 0 0.5 divided by 2 is how much my bad not 0 0.5 if you look the second significant figure is in decimals all right 
so i will do 0.1 divide by 2 second significant figure is in decimal so it will become 0.05 so h is going to be uh, h is going to be for upper bound and for lower bound is going to be hmm, 9.5 plus 0.05 and 9.5 minus 0.05 so 9 this is going to be 9.55 and 9.45 so it says find the lower bound and upper bound for p so lower bound will be p is equals to 2 multiplied by we are doing lower bound so w lower bound for w is 10.5 plus 2 multiplied by lower bound for h is 9.45 all right so two multiply by 10.5 plus two multiply by 9.45 so it's going to be 39.9 lower bound and upper bound is going to be again 2 upper bound is 11.5 plus 2 multiplied by h which is 9.55 okay 2 multiplied by 11.5 plus 2 multiplied by 9.55 so it's 42.1 Moving on to our next question, um, even though this question looks difficult, it's actually not that difficult. It says A, B, C are points on the circumference of a, a circle center zero. Tangent D, E, which is this tangent D, E, touches the circle at C. Angle B, C, E, B, C, E is 53 and angle A, C, O, all right, is 20. Find X. Now look, we have to use circle theorem over here actually. If this is 53, A is also going to be 53 because these are alternate angles. Whenever an angle touches like this at a tangent, whenever it makes a tangent like this, it's 53. So if this side is 53, this is also going to be 53. All right. Now the second thing is this is making a 90 degree angle, which means 90 minus 53 is actually how much? 37. So this angle is going to be 37. This angle is also 37. All right, why both of these angles are 37? Because, look, this is radius R, and this is also radius R. Both of the sides are same, okay? So in order to find X, if you look at it, if I make this triangle now, A, C, B. This is 53. This is 20 plus 37. 20 plus 37 is 57. And this is X plus 37. So if we add all of these up, 53 plus 57 plus X plus 37, it's 180 degrees. All right. Now add all of these up, 53 plus 57 plus 37. So it's 147. X plus 147 is equals to 180 degrees. All right. X is equals to 180 minus 147. X is equals to 180 minus 147 is 33 degrees. So the value of X is 33 degrees. Now we'll move on to the next question. It says calculate the value of Y. This is very easy. All right, this is sine law. So basically it means sine y upon 8.3 is equals to sine 105 upon 16.2. All right, so sine y is equals to sine 105 multiplied by 8.3 divided by 16.2 y is equals to sine inverse sine 105 multiplied by 8.3 upon 16.2 all right 
सो साइन वन हंड्रेड एंड फाइव मल्टीप्लाई बाई एट पॉइंट थ्री अपॉन सिक्सटीन पॉइंट टू द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई इज ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स और राइट सो ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स मीन्स ट्वेंटी नाइन पॉइंट सेवन और राइट मूविंग ऑन टू अर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन से स्केच द ग्राफ ऑफ वाई इज इक्वल टू कॉस एक्स सो लुक वेन एवर यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस मेक ओवर योर एंगल्स नाइनटी वन एटी टू सेवेंटी एंड थ्री सिक्सटी सो लुक कॉस स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम वन एट नाइन्टी डिग्री इट रीच इज जीरो एट वन एटी डिग्रीज इट रीचेज टू माइनस वन एट टू सेवेंटी डिग्रीज इट्स अगेन जीरो माई बैग लेट मी इरेज दिस ऑल राइट एंड एट थ्री सिक्सटी अगेन इट कम्स ओवर हेयर सो दिस इज हाउ यू स्केच फ्रॉम जीरो टू थ्री सिक्सटी नाउ द क्वेश्चन सेज वेन कॉस एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट टू वन फाइन द रिफ्लेक्स एंगल सो एक्स इज इक्वल टू कॉस इन वर्स जीरो पॉइंट टू वन कॉस इन वर्स जीरो पॉइंट टू वन इट्स सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट एट सेवन एक्स इज इक्वल टू सेवेंटी सेवन पॉइंट एट सेवन ऑल राइट नाउ सिंस इट इज लुक एड शुगर टू कॉफी कॉस इज पॉजिटिव ओवर हेयर एंड इन द लास्ट सेगमेंट ऑल राइट एंड सिंस द क्वेश्चन इज सींग रिफ्लेक्स एंगल विच इज ग्रेटर दैन टू सेवेंटी एंड लेस दैन थ्री सिक्सटी आई विल डू I will I will have to start from here and go all the way up till here. So I will do 360 minus what was it 77.87 77.87. So 360 minus answer. My bad. 360 minus 77. Point, it's 282.13. All right. so you guys can write 282.1 as your answer now let me see how many question oh my god still we have three three questions okay no problem inshallah we'll finish it now it could this question says write as a single fraction in its simplest form so look this 10x square minus 60x we have to take common as 10x this becomes x minus 6 and this one x square minus x minus 30 Look, give me two numbers. When you multiply, you get minus thirty, and when you add or subtract, you get minus six. So the two numbers are x square minus six x plus five x minus thirty. This becomes co take common x minus six plus five x minus six. So this becomes x minus six and x plus five. So ten x bracket x minus six. Upon x plus five and x minus six. X minus six, x minus six cancel. Ten x divided by x plus five. Next question we have part B. In part B, look, we have to do cross multiplication. So this becomes seven. Eight x minus one plus five x plus three upon x plus three and eight x minus one. Seven multiplied by eight is fifty-six. Fifty-six x minus seven plus five x plus fifteen upon x plus three and eight x minus one. So fifty-six x plus five x is how much? Sixty-one x minus seven plus fifteen is plus eight upon x plus three and eight x minus one. so this is going to be your answer now next question is says the diagram shows the cube so in this question in question 21 it says that the diagram shows a cuboid a b c d e f g a b is 15.1 b c is 4.5 and c g is 9.4 9.2 it says calculate the angle that diagonal b h makes with the face e d h e so basically the question is asking you to find this angle all right now first of all if you look at it this is becoming like a 90 degree angle 
how like this look this is a 90 degree angle so first of all I need to find a h if you look at it a h is same as b g so let me find b g first b g is going to be if you look at this b g is like this b g c 4.5 and 9.2 all right so bg is going to be how much bg is going to be bg whole square is equals to 4.5 square plus 9.2 square bg is equals to let's calculate 4.5 square plus 9.2 square and we are going to under root it so it's 10.24 10 point sorry not after under root after under root my bad let me remove the under root it's 10.241 all right bg so it means ah is also 10.241 now if you look at this triangle it's like this a H B A H is ten point two four one all right and A B is fifteen point one I need to find this H angle so this becomes opposite this becomes adjacent opposite and adjacent comes in tan so I will say tan X is equal to our opposite fifteen point one to our upon adjacent to point ten point two four one x is equals to 10 inverse 15.1 divided by 10.241 so 10 inverse 15.1 upon 10.241 sorry it's 10.241 10.241 so your answer is going to be 15 0.85 which means 15.9 all right moving on to our final question it says a b c d is a rhombus okay a b c d is a rhombus with the side length 13.6 a b is 41 b a c is a sector b a c is a sector with center b b a c d a c d a C is a sector with center D okay calculate the shaded area so now guys even if this questions looks difficult you guys do not need to worry what we'll do we'll divide this into a triangle like this if you look at it this is a triangle a B C all right and what else I did I divided this into two parts let's call this s1 let's call this s2 okay now what how we will find the answer for this question we will do area of sector abc abc is this whole thing abc area of sector abc minus i will subtract from it s1 plus s2 and I will multiply this whole thing by 2 because I want to find the shaded region for this and this okay guys so area of sector is going to be what's the formula for area of sector it's x upon 360 which is 41 upon 360 okay let me just zoom it out, out a bit it's 41 upon 360 multiply by pi r square r square is how much guys r square is 13.6 okay and now i am going to subtract it with s1 plus s2 and then multiply the whole thing by 2 now how do i find s1 and s2 look in order to find s1 do you guys agree that this is a triangle so i will use the formula of area of triangle okay area of triangle is half multiplied by a this side 13.6 half a b this side is also 13.6 sine 41 and i will subtract this with the area of the sector 
How what is the area of the sector? X upon 360, which is 41 upon 360, multiply by pi, multiply by r square, 13.6 square. I will subtract this from this. So let me do it now. So 41 upon 360 multiply by pi multiply by 13.6 square it's 66.17 66.177 and what's the area of the triangle it's half ab 13.6 multiply by 13.6 sine 41 so it's 60 0.67 minus 60.67 so if I subtract it 66.177 minus answer I get 5.504 it means this portion is 5.504 all right so now what will I do 41 upon 360 multiply by pi multiply by 13.6 I will subtract the unshaded region now so I will subtract 5.504 plus 5.504 because there are two 5.504 is this side and that side and then I will do multiply by 2 the whole thing because we want to find this region and this region so I already know that 41 upon 360 multiplied by pi r square is 66.177. I will subtract it from 5.504 multiplied with 2 because there are 2, 11.009. And I will multiply the whole thing by 12. So 66.177 minus answer multiply this with 2. So I get 110. So our answer for this question is going to be 110. So guys, I hope you were able to understand the whole paper. If you were able to do so, please do like, subscribe and share my channel. Your support would honestly mean a lot. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.